Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video and thank you so much for tuning in. So I have a question for you. Have you ever had a person or an event or maybe an object that has inspired you in your life? Drop a comment down below. Let me know what that was. On today's episode, I scoop a little inspiration off another content creator. And again, welcome back. And I did scoop a little bit of uh, inspiration off another content creator. So that creator is the Mr. John Ross of Watch JR Go. He is a very popular automotive YouTuber out there and I've been watching him for some years. But from time to time he strays away from his core content, which is working on cars and stuff, flipping vehicles. And that's something that's just completely out of the ordinary for his, his type of content. And typically, when we see these kind of things, he collabs with his dad, uh, Ross Lumbert, and I think he's an engineer, really smart guy, but they came across like a 70 plus old ice cream maker made by Taylor. And I found the video pretty interesting. It's kind of cool. I love ice cream. I think most of you probably out there do too. Sorry about you lactose intolerant people. But anyway, a few weeks ago, I was out here in the backyard and I, I was just kind of wandering around thinking about some stuff. And I saw something in this old planter here, this concrete planter, it's kind of sticking up. And I said, well, that didn't belong there. Now, since I pulled it out and cleaned it up, <clears throat> um, this old peerless ice cream scoop, it's in pretty rough shape, but I'm gonna venture to guess it's probably close to 50 years old. Um, but it's sitting out here in a flower pot buried underneath all this mess. Um, it's got a few issues, so we're gonna take it in the shop and uh, take a little bit better look at it. Okay, so we're in the shop and we're gonna examine this piece of uh, history, I'd say. Um, again, this is a Peerless branded um, ice cream scoop, and I don't know if you can see, where's oh, bad, there we go, a little engraved branding on the thumb, whatever you wanna call that, thumb guard. Um, so yeah, it looks like to be in pretty rough shape. The biggest issue with it, in my opinion, is is that when you go to crank this thing to scoop out your ice cream, you can see right here a little bit of abrasion. So that swing arm is at the cap. This is bent and you actually can see it. So that would be the first thing we're gonna to try to tackle is straightening this out so this moves nice and smoothly and no longer scrapes on the inside. And then we can do some cleanup on this. Um, I'd really like to take this, this thing apart, and I think I'm going to kind of see how it works. I'm sure it's just really basic. Uh, you've got these gears here um, that move the mechanism, and then behind this rod here is a standard screw, and behind that appears to be a spring. It's obviously, it's spring loaded. Um, handle just screws off like that. We'll remove that. You've got a screw here that. Looks like attaches the rod to the body of the scoop. So um, yeah, let's gather up a couple tools and uh, see if we can get this thing apart, and repair it, and get it cleaned up. Maybe we'll have a usable ice cream scoop. All right, looks like fun. Okay, so as I mentioned, we got some tools together, and all I think we're going to really need here at this point um, our handy dandy pick, maybe to help us remove the spring and this internally uh, located underneath the screw and then a flathead screwdriver. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is actually take the handle off. The handle is just made of a hard plastic and let's just thread it in there. So it's double threaded. Oh. Okay, so the stud is just built into the handle. Fantastic. Alright, our little thumb guard. Okay, this is peerless on it, it's pretty cool. And then we have the body itself, so we're going to start with this screw here, see where it takes us. Okay. Oops, we just lost our handle, rolled off the table. We'll cover that here in a minute. Alright, so this screw is coming out, and there it is. And then, how does that barrel come off? this out here. Uh, let's see here. 
here. Make sure how this gets removed. Doesn't want to. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. It's not too bad. Pop that off. And then we are going to attack the screw here. This is a little bit uh, tighter. Might be a worse thread. Nope. I want to put penetrating oil on it, but this is a food service item and I don't want that in here. So let's grab a thicker screwdriver. Here's got a fatter head on it, and a little bit better torque. Ah. I don't want to chew that screw up too bad. It does not want to come out. But maybe we are looking at a tiny dab of penetrating wall. We'll just have to clean all that up. Um, yeah, let's, uh, once we're done with it, clean it very well because again, this is a food service item so we're going to give this a few minutes to think about breaking down some of the corrosion in there and we'll come right back to it okay so I'm back again probably about 30 minutes later I did have to apply uh, several rounds of penetrating oil in here this thing is really seized up and I didn't want to damage the screw head any more than I really have with the screwdriver so it's loosened up nicely for me now and See if we can get the rest of the screw out of here without much issue. So, once we get this apart, we're going to do the little repair and do some cleaning. See if we can get this thing freshened up a little bit. Whoa, there we go. And there you have it. The screw is out. And it's got a little gunked up underneath that washer. I think we'll clean up nicely. So, what's next? I'm gonna dislodge this guy here, and that's free. A little gearing here for our handle. And we've got a spring in here that I don't know if it's gonna want to come out or not. It'll be a pair of pliers. I'd like to get it out of there. Real handy. Nipix or Nipix. Needle nose pliers. This thing flying and hitting me in the face. Huh. There it goes. Simple as that. There's probably a set hole in there for this guy. I'm just got to remember its position. Hopefully, it'll line itself up. All right, so what I'm going to do here is grab a little bowl or a little bucket and some soapy dish soap and. Uh, Give this thing a little cleanup and see how we do. But first, let's take care of the uh, little issue we have here, the little flat spot. So, I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I thought of a couple different ways of trying to repair this dent. Um, I think maybe the best course of action is try to bend it with a pair of pliers. So, I'll get a pair of locking pliers here and a microfiber towel to protect the metal so we don't scratch that up. Um, yeah ruin our beautiful piece here. And we're marring this thing through the, the towel a little bit, as you can see right there. I'll fix that though, no worries. I think we're going to have to hit it with a little rubber mallet, flatten it off there, get that flat spot all the way out. I don't want to damage this thing anymore. So I'm going to do that off camera because it's going to be a lot of noise and a lot of vibration here on the table. And I don't want the camera to look crazy. So I'm give it a couple pops against the wood table here and see what we come up with. I'll be right back. Okay, so I did a little beating on this and a little bit more bending. Um, stuff's pretty stout. Um, and I didn't want to crack it, so I didn't take it much further. But a lot of test fitting of this guy in here just to make sure we've got it where it clears and it doesn't scrape the inside of the scoop any longer. I did see something cool when I was um when I was uh, test fitting all this stuff. On the inside of this, if you could see it, well we can see that or not. There's a 16 stamped on here. And I'm guessing that is the size of the scoop, number 16. 
So let's get our stuff to wash this mess up and see how it looks after we get it clean. And if we need to do any maybe sanding or polishing to it. And then we'll put it back together. See you back in a bit. All right, so I am back with uh, some soapy water. I've got a little toothbrush here that I'm going to use to scrub this stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our parts in here and let them soak for a little bit. The only thing I'm not putting in there is the hardware that is made of steel. It has some evidence of rust on it. Um, yeah. Like, I think the only thing is, is this washer right here. I'm not putting that in the water. We are going to clean that up uh, in the spring. So everything's in there. We're going to let it soak for a few minutes and come back and give it a little scrub. Okay, so I've given this stuff a few minutes to uh, soak it in the dish soap. Let me break down some of the crud that's on it. Um, I did off camera go ahead and sand that little washer um, that was kind of rust on it. So again, I don't want to get it wet. It came out pretty nice. It's definitely a lot better than it was. So I feel better about putting that back on it. So let's uh, get our hands a little dirty here and get to scrubbing. Let's see what we got. Get it cleaned up. Um, I'm gonna inspect the parts here in a minute after we get them dried off. See if we're gonna do a little baby, a little sand and polish on them. Not quite sure yet, um, but we'll figure it out as we go, as we always do. Okay, after the bath, um, yeah, the, at least the scoop body itself, I am going to sand. Um, so I did a little test spot right here, and it shined up pretty nice. And I was just using a little bit of 800 grit uh, wet dry sandpaper. Uh, so I'm not going to bore you folks with this. It's just going to be a lot of back and forth and round and round just to get some of the, the uh, corrosion off of it and see if we can brighten this thing up a little bit inside and out. And uh, after I get done with that, I'll show you the results. But again, it's just some sanding and we all know how to do that. So sit back and I'll see you in a second. Okay, folks, I'm back. Um, went ahead and did all the sanding on the scoop body here, uh, turned out pretty good. Um, pretty happy with the results. I'm not gonna take it too terribly far. I mean, it, it is what it is. Um, and I also did a little bit of sanding on the thumb actuator there. So everything looks good. Uh, what I used was a series of 800. I wanted to put 1500 too, but I ran out. So then stepped out down to 2000 and then to 2500. And it's got a nice little shine to it. There's still some pitting, but the thing, you know, like I said earlier, my guess is maybe it's 50 years old, uh, older. They've been making these things for a long, long time. Um, but now, time to put it back together, which is just, uh, I guess, the reverse of taking it apart. And that seems to be pretty cut and dry. So we're going to go ahead and get going on that right now. So again, there is a hole, which you cannot see really in the, on the camera, that lines up the pins here. So you can't really miss for it. Did it go? Okay, right about there. And just sets in there just like that. It's kind of hard to take out, but it's all gunked up. Then we need our handle. And it goes on something like cut out for the spring. Like this. Boom actuation on the spring perfect then we have our little bitty nut I'm sorry screw and washer Let's set this thing in here Let's start it by hand this should go down pretty easily compared to taking it off earlier which is just a chore and we'll take care of that right now
doesn't go too terribly tight, but make sure it's tight enough to set. There we go. And then next will be our this guy here. Let's set this up here properly. Fantastic. So this is the trick right here, I think. Um, setting this up to where it lines up right with the gears. So I might have to put you on pause for a second while I figure this out. Um, let me make sure that we have perfect alignment. I'm probably going to have to clamp that there. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to um, yeah, get you on pause here for a second, sorry. Okay, so I'm back. Got me a little clamp here. Looks like that little clamp was made to do this job. And slide the gearing under there. Make sure it lines up properly before, I really could use three hands here. We find our set screw, run it down. Everybody's happy. And we have actuation. Fantastic. Okay. So, a little torque on that. Good. And then we start putting back the rest of it. And that's just a matter of a little guy here. This little nub on the uh, deal there. Seems to work. All right, fantastic. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. Was this worth it or not worth it? Well, I think it is. I like to tinker. So let's get this mess cleaned up and I'll be right back with you with an outro. Okay, guys. Well, I hope some of you might have been inspired by this little project slash quasi restoration of the old. Uh, Peerless number 16 ice cream scoop. And uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, I was kind of inspired to do this uh, and stumbled across it. Ended up watching that video that watched JR go and his dad put out about that Taylor ice cream machine they restored and got it working. And it made me want to do something with this. So I'm actually going to try to reach out to John Ross and see if I can get a P.O. box or something. I'm, I'm going to send this to him, let him check it out. Maybe he and the dad could use it to scoop out some ice cream later on the summer. Um, Thanks again for watching, folks. Remember, we have the sweepstakes coming, prizes that are coming your way. Every 250 subscribers, hit that sub button, hit the like button, and leave a comment below. Tell us what your thoughts are. Were you inspired? If you were, share your project. Love to hear from you. Until next time, we love you.